in August. Now, whether you drink it because of the good antioxidants, or just tell yourself that, or just because you like it, wine is one of life's pleasures. It's a toast at a wedding, a bottle shared with friends, or a couple over a romantic dinner. And some Albertans may just be returning from a holiday in BC, which included a visit to the Okanagan's great vineyards. Natalie McLean is a sommelier and wine blogger and author. She's in now to have a conversation with you about wine. Have you a dinner planned this long weekend? and haven't yet decided on the wine. Natalie has recommendations for wine pairings, whether you're serving beef or fish or vegetarian. So if your preference is a bold red or a light white or something bubbly or rosé, give us a call, 1-866-468-4422. You can email your wine question to alberta at noon at cbc.ca or just send a tweet to alberta at noon. Hello, Natalie. Hi, Holly. You've made me thirsty already. I'm thirsty like here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We should have a toast to this. We will, a virtual one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Welcome back. Oh, it's good to be back. Start us off by telling us what you've been drinking and enjoying this summer. Oh, well, it's been a summer of uh, rosé and Riesling. Um, I- I'm loving the dry rosés, both uh, from the Okanagan Valley and Niagara, as well as, of course, uh, Provence and Tavel. They are such a wonderful, refreshing, crisp wine because I find they pack all the flavor of a red, but they don't have any of the heaviness of the alcohol, so they go with seafood, salads, everything. And something I'm just guessing, you know, the rest of us may not have discovered. Yes, well, you know, we have this sort of hangover image, if you will, of rosé being sweet, pink, and syrupy. And good rosés these days are magnificent. I mean, they just... You get all of the pleasure of wine without the heaviness, Mm -hmm. and a lot of them are bone dry. For example, any rosé you pick up from Provence uh, in France is dry. They're not allowed by law to make a sweet one, and many of those from Canada are following suit. They're perfectly dry, and so they're very versatile with food, and and just they work so nicely on the deck or dock as an aperitif. (laughs) Can you name some? I suspect that as we go out, go throughout the program today, folks are going to be getting a pen handy or they'll be, you know, adding this to their, their phone or something, but they'll want to know what wines you're talking about. Oh, sure. Um, well, you know, as I mentioned, both in Niagara and the Okanagan Valley, we have um, some terrific producers who make the dry style of rosé, and also the Rieslings and the more full-bodied reds if you're into barbecued meats, but they make the whole range. So, you know, if you're looking uh, to B.C., I mean, there's <laughs> where to begin. I mm-hmm. mean, there's Mission Hill, uh, Ganton and Larson, Jackson Triggs, Tantalus makes a beautiful, crisp, dry Riesling. You know, some of these really specialize in, in different wines, even though they do make a lot of different wines. You know, when I think of um, uh, mouth-watering, juicy Pinot Noir, I think of Blue Mountain in the Okanagan, and that's so divine with planked salmon. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, I, I, um, we're, as, as you mentioned, posting uh, some of these wines on your site today. I've also posted even more on nataliemcclain.com, so no need to scramble and write them down. People can find them after we uh, finish up here. Well, and that's a great idea, too, for those who can stay with us or can take a check uh, later. Now, as we close in on a long weekend, get any tips particularly for Labor Day weekend wines? You know, it's it's a matter of taste, of course. It's what you like to drink. But I, I like to, you know, toast the end of summer with some of those summery wines that perhaps don't work as well with heavier the heavier meals that we'll enjoy in the fall. So, mm-hmm. like those dry rosés, the Rieslings, but even um, a sparkling wine. doesn't have to be champagne, but sparkling wines like Sumac Ridge's um, Stellar's J from B.C. is marvelous. I mean, it goes with shellfish, uh, seafood, salads, vegetarian, anything you've got on the go, and it's just so crisp and refreshing. It's like having the sort of the, the ocean wash over your palate. And what could be wrong with that? <laughs> 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 uh, what's your advice for keeping wines chilled at the cottage? Yeah, sometimes we um, will set out some wines, um, whether they're reds or whites, and both can get too warm if they're on the yes. picnic table or in the sun. And we have and some so you, hot days coming up here. Isn't that great? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is. So you can still keep your cool uh, wine-wise, though. So you can either, you know, if you do have a, a fridge or a cooler at the cottage, you can keep them in that. Um, or, you know, another tip is just to put them, if you're, if you're lakeside, into the water, because the water is, is usually a lot colder than the air these days, especially as we near the end of summer. 
um, or just an ice bucket will also work. And, and just a note on wine temperatures, because I do get asked that a lot. Mm-hmm. We, we often serve white wines too cold, like fridge cold. The way you know that it's too cold is that your bottle or your glass is misting over with condensation. So take your white wines out of the fridge at least for 15 minutes before you serve them. And reds we serve too warm. Hmm. Um, they can do with just a little bringing down from uh, room temperature, and then they'll feel and taste more refreshing. Okay. My guest is Natalie McLean. We're talking about wine this afternoon, your opportunity to um, ask Natalie about uh, a certain wine that you may be looking for. Perhaps you've got a favorite, but you're looking to to try something a little bit different. Maybe you have some questions about uh, wines grown in certain parts of the world, and you uh, you want to ask Natalie about those. 1-866-468-4422 is the number to call to have a conversation about wine, or perhaps you've discovered a great one that you just want to share. You may have been at the Niagara region or you may have been in the Okanagan and uh, you found something that you think the rest of us would like. Give us a call, 1-866-468-4422. You can email your wine question or comment to Alberta at noon at cbc.ca or just send a tweet to Alberta at noon. I want to move on to talk about price now, Natalie, because of course that that goes along with uh, looking for the right wine at your liquor store. What's your advice for listeners on what to pay for wine? Uh, well, these days, I don't think you have to pay a lot, or at least not as much as we did, say, five, ten years ago, for really great quality wines. And, you know, there's a number of factors contributing uh, to why the prices of wines are coming down from, you know, better use of technology to understanding grapes, where they grow best, like, for example, in the Okanagan. Um, the grapes that we've already talked about, the, the Rieslings and the Pinot Noirs and um, even the Syrahs, they do really well there. And so winemakers are learning what works. And when you have a, a wine style and a crop that works, of course, you're going to, to excel at it. You're not going to lose so much of the crop, and your prices will reflect that. So, and, and then on the other side of things, there's more competition than ever mm-hmm. before. You know, new producers in all of the existing regions. I mean, I can't believe how many new wineries are starting every year in the Okanagan and Niagara. But also new regions, like just, uh, you know, uh, uh, re-emerging regions. So old, old is new again, like Portugal and Spain are coming out with new style wines or uh, different regions are popping up. We don't see these wines on the shelves yet, but, you know, China is starting to produce a lot of wine. Hmm. Um, yeah, and they'll be coming, <laughs> coming soon. Um, but so that, that comp- competitive factor is also making pricing competitive. So it, to answer your question, you know, I, I really think you can find some terrific wines in that 12 to $18 range. It's a real sweet spot. You can go up and splurge. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, you can still find something decent under 10 But I think if you're looking in that price range, you're going to find some fantastic wines that taste twice as expensive as they cost. Very good. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, for anyone who, who, who buys wine uh, very often, uh, you really do see that there are some very nice wines at really reasonable prices here. Absolutely. Is there a difference, Natalie, between late summer wines, that's where we're at now, and winter wines at all? Well, you know, I think of uh, wine like wardrobe. So, you know, we're transitioning that sort of pre-fall um, uh, couture sure. <laughs> is coming out with wine. I don't mean that in a snobby way at all. Yeah. But, you know, I think we, we start to look to more full-bodied wines. Uh, the reason is not just because it's getting colder outside and they're maybe a bit more warming, but that the food that we eat is starting to get more uh, robustly sure. flavored. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you start to get into stews and soups and, and roast beef and maybe things that, you know, you didn't cook in the summer because it just would make the kitchen too hot, the oven mm-hmm. was on, um, and you were eating al fresco, you were just getting fresh seafood, light fare. So I think the wines move along with the seasonality of the food. Tell me about the rules. The old rules used to be red wine with red meats and white wine with white meat or seafood. Have those rules been thrown out altogether, or do you still follow them in any way as a guide? Well, I think, you know, they they were established initially because they made sense, like, just like, um, well, not a lot of us put ketchup on ice cream. There's certain flavors that just don't really work together or, or just seem strange or clash, compete with each other. Mm-hmm. And so the old adage about red wine and fish was because often the red wine made the fish taste metallic. And it's, you know, there's been more recent studies as to why that is. The iodine content in fish 
um, is often responsible. So um, shellfish, especially like uh, scallops, have a lot of iodine, or iron, I should say, iron, and that reacts chemically with red wine, the, the tannins in red wine, that furry mouth feeling you get from eating walnuts. Mm-hmm. So there is a reason. That said, though, our cuisine has expanded so much. We're doing, uh, you know, lots of dishes from around the world. We're mixing different herbs and spices. So I can't think of a better match than Pinot Noir, which is a juicy lighter red with planked salmon, Mm -hmm. uh, which is a meaty fish. So they kind of meet each other in the middle. And that clash doesn't happen because Pinot Noir doesn't have a lot of heavy tannins Mm -hmm. and salmon has the heft to stand up to the flavors of a red wine. Mm -hmm. What about halibut? What would you serve with that? Well, with there, I would probably go more on the white side. Again, it's no hard and fast rules, but halibut being a nice light white fish or a medium fish, mm-hmm. uh, but on the, the white side of the family, I would probably go with a full-bodied white, like maybe um, a Chardonnay with a mm-hmm. bit of oak on it, um, mm-hmm. so that it has some heft. It would also depend on the sauce, because often the fish or the meat is just the vehicle to deliver the sauce. So chicken can be done a hundred ways or more. Uh, from, you know, creamy chicken to herb rub chicken to spicy hot chicken. And so it really will depend on the, the preparation. Mm-hmm, I'm sure. Now, barbecue season, Natalie's alive and well in Alberta right now and will be for some time. What are your top five wines for, for barbecue for Labor Day weekend? Well, there I I generally go to the heftier reds. Now, some people love to grill veggies or or seafood or Mm -hmm. portobello mushroom, and then, of course, we can look at the wines that we've just been talking about with your Rieslings, even a sparkling or rosé, but a lot of us love uh, a good slab of meat on the barbecue. So whether it's a steak or hamburgers or pork or or whatever, um, I think a good full-bodied, um, red does the job there because you're trying to match not only the weight of the meat, its flavors, its chewiness, but also the charry flavor we get that's so lovely from, from grilling. Mm-hmm. Can, um, you, can you name yeah. some reds that you would recommend for barbecue? Sure, absolutely. Um, I would probably go with, um, well, if I were to look to the Okanagan, I would go with the, uh, a Cabernet or a Syrah from Mission Hill or Sumac Ridge. Um, but then I would also look abroad as well. So Australian Shiraz, say from Wolf Blast or Rosemount or, uh, I mean, there's just so many there too when you start trying to name all the wines. Absolutely. <laughs> or even Chile, Chile mm-hmm. and Argentina. So Argentina has a lovely robust red wine grape called Malbec, and I find it's halfway between Cabernet and uh, Shiraz. So all kinds of terrific producers down there, and the the beauty of this wine is that it's often under around the $15 mark or less. Wow, and that's terrific. What about the Canadian wine industry? I know you recommend wines from the Okanagan, and I'm sure you would as well from the Niagara region. How healthy is the industry, given what you've told us about earlier as well, is that there's lots of competition out there? Yes, there's lots of competition, but um, Canada's competing um, neck uh, neck on neck with with the best. I mean, we we continue to win medals in international competitions that, you know, are judged uh, by their technical merits. Um, But I also, you know, we're just, we're competing well as an industry for, um, for consumer dollars. Now, I think we still have a long way to go. um, And it's not just about being patriotic and and (laughs) drinking what's in your backyard. Mm -hmm. These wines are great. But as a percentage of consumption, of wine consumption, I think uh, Canadians themselves can step it up. Not so much the Canadian vintners. It's us who need to open our minds and realize things have changed dramatically in the last five to ten years. The quality is there. um, The price competitiveness is there. The range of styles is there. And I think um, there's a lot more room for Canadians to be drinking more B.C., Ontario, and and the other wine regions, of course, like Nova Scotia and Quebec. Mm -hmm. The number to call this afternoon to talk about wine with Natalie McLean is 1-866-468-4422. You can email your wine question to alberta at noon at cbc.ca or just send a tweet to alberta 
at noon. Uh, does that mean, Natalie, you're talking about Canadian wines? I know, you know, it is a, it has been a, a hard thing for the industry to convince Canadians that wines here are as good as the wines that they buy from other parts of the world. Um, do you think the wine industry needs to step up as well and and uh, and and you know sh- showcase its product, or what's gonna what's it gonna take to change things around? Um, I think it will, certainly the quality is there, I, I, you know, and that will continue to improve because we, we bring in international winemakers, we send out our own around the world, and that's a very important thing to do within the wine industry and the food industry. It's like chefs do stages at different restaurants just to see the techniques and then bring that learning home. So that's happening. The better use of technology is happening. Um, the industry talks you know, to its, like among its own in terms of sharing learning. So mm-hmm. that's there. I think, yeah, it, sure, there's room to, to do better marketing all the time, to engage people. I think there's a really huge role yet to be exploited by social media like Twitter and Facebook and the mobile apps that is not being exploited fully or, or you know, mm-hmm. I think it's only a 10% of its potential, but where wineries could engage one-on-one with the people who either drink or could potentially be drinking their wines. Yes, absolutely. Natalie, tell folks where they can reach you and how they can follow you for all of your wine recommendations. Sure. I'm at uh, nataliemclean.com and I recommend uh, lots of wines every week and pairings and recipes and that sort of thing. You can find me on Twitter at Natalie McLean and that's N-A-T-A-L-I-E-M-A-C L-E-A-N. I'm on Facebook um, at facebook.com slash Nat DeCants. And just about every other social media is going. <laughs> All right. So people who want to know more about wine, a uh, wonderful place to go to, to, to check and see what you're writing about. Natalie, And thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure, Holly. And uh, I'll raise a glass to you this weekend. <laughs> Thanks so much. All, All the right. best to you. Take care. That's Natalie McLean. She is a sommelier.